Hello everybody! It is Rocko you boy coming at you with another Age of Sigmar video. In this, oh my goodness, fourth edition video. You know, I'm gonna resume my Age of Sigmar 101 classes here with Rocco. How do we build lists? What do we do? War Scroll Builder is gone. I, you know, I'm not paying for an app. Well, here is an amazing resource, dear viewer. The List Bot. What this is, is it is a list building tool. It is a damage calculator. It is a check out the stats here. You can make profiles and sign in. It is an amazing tool. And also, in Age of Sigmar 4th edition, compared to 3rd edition, we have a whole new way and how we actually build lists for the game. Before it was you had to have so many types of units, there were caps on units, there was only so many heroes you could take, so on and so forth. You know, you had to go and pick a battalion where you would be like, hey, I'm going to go and put everyone in a one drop, or I'm going to go put everyone to go and get an extra artifact. That We have a new system that I am a fan of for 4th edition, it is similar to what they do for um, that Conquest, the last Argument of Kings game. Um, where you have a hero, but you, you pick a regiment, right? You pick a hero to lead the regiment. The hero can only bring certain types of troops or some lesser heroes in their units there for this regiment, right? A normal hero can take three other units, a uh, general... For your army, you can take up to four. And currently, in the General's Handbook, we have a season rule where you can buff a unit in your General's Regiment to get d different bonuses, like extra rend against a certain type of enemy, uh, plus one to hit and wound against um, uh, units in the opposing General's Regiment. And then there's uh, another one that's like a bodyguard rule. A lot of stuff, but let's just keep this simple right now, all right? So let me just go and show you what we're talking about. Now, there again, the, the lesser hero thing isn't... Not as many heroes as you think can go and be companions for this. Um, that, actually, we can see the list in all the indexes that dropped. With all the list of heroes, they can go and say what their roles are. But right here... And how this list builder works and how building a list works. This is a two for episode. We go here, select the formation, uh, select the faction. I'm feeling my deepkin, mostly because I I know how to use this for deepkin. Um, I want an eidolon of Mathlan aspect of the sea because right now they're a good wizard. Two cast, get pluses to cast. They've got a good ward save, good armor save. We're feeling good. I like my aspect of the storm, but as I'll get into this, magic and praying for the priests are very important in this edition. And also, for my second thing, I want a soul scryer to help with deep strike shenanigans, and also can give out plus one to wound against heroes, and there are hero monsters that seem nigh unkillable. This helps. When elves generally wound on fours. So how does this work? Alright, cool. You got two drops here. One for each regiment, right? Well, you go to this little plus sign. You can pick your units. So let's say I want, you know, more star guard. They're very good at this addition. They're fast. They're punchy. I want to reinforce them. How does that work in this? Well... Each unit can only be reinforced one time, but that means each unit can be reinforced. That, you know, has the proper keywords to do that. There are some things like that have the unique keyword. Uh, Warcry Warbands are a good example of this, that they don't allow you to be reinforced. That is in your list building stuff. That this list builder takes into account. And to do that, I just press this plus sign. If I wanted to duplicate it, I'd press that. If I want to get rid of it, we hit the X. 
Now, looking at this, hitting the plus side, you can see all the different types of units that the Eidolon of the Sea here can take, which is basically everything in a Deepkin list. They're, we don't have that deep of a roster. But, like, if you go to Cities of Sigmar, you know, Dwarf Heroes can take Dwarf Units, Elf Heroes can take Elf Units, some Foot Heroes can take Foot Units. Also, you can see Lotan is here, because Lotan has that certain keyword where they can be included in elf armies for deepkin as a unit choice um flesh eater courts is a good example of this in where are the courtiers you know, each regiment could take a courtier per like arch region or whatever it ends up being the uh, the ghoul kings like tier hero so you still can get your hero spam in a way your support heroes in and not every army makes sense with that. Like, Stormcast doesn't really have a lot of heroes. They have a huge hero roster, but you'd think there'd be more heroes that they could bring along. But again, that, that's a nitpick. So, they we're making our list here. I want a couple sharks. Sharks are not uh, reinforceable anymore. Very sad. Like, oh no. Units full. It's alright. Well, let's see what we got here for the Soul Scryer. We can only take Namarty units, and I like some archers. I think having two units of ten is going to be good, because they die really quick. Um, and I like them for more screening purposes, and holding objectives, and being like range support, right? They, they serve a different purpose now in 4th edition. And then, you're like, oh no, where's Shelly baby girl? Where's my, my turtle? How can I fit her? I'm going to go and click this button here to make the idol on my general. Then I can go back in and pick my 500 point Leviathan. Be at 1950 points. Two drops. Like, Rocco, that's interesting. Why are you shooting for 1950 points? Well, in the rules, it is stated that they basically brought back in second edition, you can pay 50 uh, points of your list to get a free command point in the first battle round. Which, again, it's a throwback from 2nd edition. I like it because there are times where you're going to have awkward points values. And now you do not pay points for endless spells. Stay with me. We're going to get there. So if you've got awkward points totals, shooting for this extra CP in an edition where there aren't a lot of command point generation abilities anymore... And there are commands that cost two points to use, thinking of you, counter charge. This is great. Also, if you know you're probably still lower drops or, you know, you're not taking first turn a lot of the time, there's a new command where you can cast a spell or chant a prayer in your opponent's hero phase at the end of the phase. They, they, they cleaned it up so that the reactions in Age of Sigmar 4th edition are now the end of the phase instead of, like, immediately after you know it's like for you like movement you always ask them like cool you're gonna redeploy that unit you're gonna redeploy that unit they got rid of that from third now it's just end of the phase do you want to redeploy it it's like a slightly better version but the point being is if i want to make sure i have the cp to do the reaction in the hero phase if i can cast a spell or chant a prayer this cp to spend it it's very helpful because if we're doing prayer points per priest, they have their own little pool of points they add up. And generally, if you pray and get enough points high enough, you get to have bonus effects onto your prayer. So doing something like this can go and help you with that. Now, the other thing too is like, well, where are my traits and my things? What am I, what am I doing here? This little uh, half moon icon lets you pick your artifact and your trait. And you may notice it's on either hero. Something that changed in 4th edition is kind of the role of the general. All right? And there's also some thoughts about this too that I'll, I'll get into. If you have the War Master command trait, uh, sorry, the War Master keyword. It's not a command trait anymore, it's just a keyword. That means you have to use that model as your general, you know. It has to be, um, 
I don't know. Archeon being your general or whoever has the trait. We're gonna, I believe Volturnos has that as well. They're like Slan and Seraphon have the War Master trait. If you have multiple War Masters in your army, you get to choose. What that means is that they're locked into being the general. That sets up what your general's regiment's generally going to be. Um, and it's another lever Games Workshop can pull to balance things by saying something is a war master. But any hero that is not unique can choose an artifact and a trait. It doesn't even have to be your general anymore, which is really nice. You know? If... You have that fantasy of, well, you know, of course the gash is there, but, you know, my dude, Sir Galahad, the white knight on steed, is actually the one leading the ground troops because Nagash is too busy blasting away with magic. You can go and do that. So what I'm going to choose here, Armor of the Sathai, because I don't like... It, it stayed the same from 3rd to 4th edition, where 6 to hit, don't do the extra stuff. And there's a lot of things, a lot of mortal wounds, exploding hits, auto-wounding still, that are around. That works great. And then also, we're going to go Delicious Morsels to heal our mounted units. And you're like, okay, cool, Rocco. That's, that's a list. You're done, right? Not yet. We have Spell Lores, which Deep can only come with one right now. The Lord of the Deep, which has some nice spells in it, which we take. If I had a prayer lore available to me, I would take that too. And then I'm offered a manifestation lore. So what's that? Generally, in 4th edition, the big box of endless spells from 2nd edition got broken up into parts. Um, the big boxes of endless spells, I should say, got broken up into parts. So there are like three or four models in there, which you just get for free. They cost a casting of your wizard if it's a magical one or a chanting if it's your priest. And they're unfortunately pretty freaking mandatory these days. If you're someone like me who I only ran a couple if any, I never bought the whole box. I bought them every once in a while single so I don't actually have like a complete set except for my Stormcast ones which honestly I think I used one of them as part of a conversion I think I only have the Comet left and the, the Hammer Hurricane and also my Sylvaneth ones so th this also means that for armies that don't already have their own manifestation lore, their own endless spells per se or endless prayers, it's going to feel a little rough but you have access to a bunch. You know, it's like Twilight Sorceries is uh, the Geminids, um, the Endless Spell Portal, and another thing I can't remember off the top of my head because I was excited about Spell Portal and Geminids being together. You get the point. Uh, Primal Energy has, like, uh, the Gnashing Jaws... Uh, Forbidden Power has all the Forbidden Power ones. I know that, that one wasn't necessarily the best you know, name thing, but you know, you, you get it. Uh, and then the Crown Spine Incarnate is its own individual thing. Now, before we freak out, I must say, a lot of these endless spells have changed. They now can go into combat with units. The Incarnate needs to be cast first. You don't just start with it. And also, it can die a lot easier. So this isn't necessarily something to be freaked out about. But, you know, now we're also looking at this. You're like, hey, Rocco, what's this Regiments of Renown thing over here? Well, they've changed how allies work with list building. That you know how, like, I have a Regiment for my Soul Scry or a Regiment for my, my Eidolon here. You can go and get a pre-built Regiment from the different boxes that came out with the last uh, lore update, the Dawnbringers update. You know, there was like, like, Elfwind's Thorns was um, an Arch Revenant and a unit of the uh, the backpack bugs with wings there that uh, were archers. I know, I'm doing a great job explaining everything. Don't mind me. Um, Gotrek is his own regiment of renown. He's a one-man army, and literally, he is. 
the black talents with Neve Black Talent and all her friends from the show also make an appearance. You can still get a Mega Gargan ally there. But this is just how they do the allies now. It is these fancy regiments, very similar to the old Dogs of War from Old Fantasy. It, it, again, this edition in fourth is kind of like a callback to all the stuff that came before it, which, honestly, it's pretty nice. And then finally, my final thing with building lists in Age of Sigmar here. If you wanted to just take a unit of somebody, like let's say I just wanted to add a hero, not in a regiment. I don't know why you would do that. But let's just say, yeah, I just wanted, you know, a uh, Tidecaster. All right, not in a regiment, just boom there. Or I just wanted to add a unit. Like, I just wanted an auxiliary unit of a light on. There we go, it popped up there. Because heroes create regiments. But I just want more units. I want more war machines. I want more turtles. Ignore the, the, the points not working out. Again, like let's say I couldn't actually fit there. We're gonna... Yeah. Auxiliary units. What they are is a unit that doesn't fit into a formation that you just want to bring... But you're allowed. It's its own independent drop, which means you're just going to be higher drops the more auxiliaries you have. And also, in list building, if you or your opponent, when you're going over your list, whoever has the least amount of auxiliary units you know, starts each round with a command point, which, again, is already a very finite resource. And I would rather... Honestly, ignore... I, you know how Games Workshop does this thing where they make like a cool... Um, a cool mechanic, and then they immediately make a thing that counters that mechanic. So, they're, you know, it's balanced. There's counterplay. There's this. There's that. Mm. This is one of those times, again, where you're just like, what were you doing? What were you thinking? This is... It's silly. Because I will never... Want, unless it's a meme list, I don't think you should ever take an auxiliary unit. Command points are precious. So I would rather go and make the Eidolon the general so I can take a fourth unit. So I can just go boom turtle. My list is fine. You know, there's also an argument with list building that because there are so many things that can counter the units you put in the general's regiment. Maybe you just go and set up other heroes to be more regiments, but you have all the bulk of your stuff not in the general's regiment. You know, one thing is to get plus one to hit and wound when attacking the general's regiment. It's shooting and in melee currently. So, you know, you can go and set up a big unit of, let's say, dark shards to be twos to hit, threes to wound into that. And if you're going into an infantry-heavy army, you're getting plus one to wound there. That's just the Dark Shards rule. They're anti-infantry one. So, you know, there's there's nuance to list building. And also, before I forget, too, we got the Manifestation Lord. We got all that stuff. The battle formations. Each army has four battle formations, which you get to select up here. For me, I like the Achillean Beastmasters because it gives all my companions plus one to hit, which means the turtle and the sharks and the eels also little fish in the water cape there are doing a lot better because with all the the readjustments going into fourth edition a lot of the profiles for everything in the game got slightly worse so just finding ways to go and be like cool everyone gets plus one to hit life is good uh, and with that that's list building, folks. Thank you for watching. Uh, sorry I've been away for a while. But, you know, I'm back. It's 4th edition. I'm here to answer your questions. Thank you for watching. You know, be nice, roll some dice, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.